surprise to her as it goes along, so bear with me. I'd like to tell you all a rather special story of how the Festival of the West came into being and became the model for all of those that have come after it around the country. We all know Mary has received many prestigious awards honoring her tireless efforts in keeping the Western genre alive and thriving. But did you know it all came from the inspiration given to her by one man, an actor by the name of John Smith, whose influence and friendship inspired her to begin the legacy of the festival back in, oh, back in 1991. Mary was only 11 years old when in 1958, John first wrote across her TV screen and into her heart as Deputy Lane Temple in the Western series Cimarron City. He never rode out. Born Robert Van Orden in Los Angeles in 1931, John began his entertainment career singing in the prestigious Mitchell Boys Choir and then was spotted in his early 20s by Hollywood agent Henry Wilson, who before signing him insisted on taking young Robert to Ciro's nightclub. Ciro's nightclub is one of the biggest nightclubs on Sunset Strip in Hollywood. When asked why a nightclub, the agent replied, I wanted to see if you could turn heads. Well, he did. At 6'3", blonde, blue-eyed and handsome, this was hardly a surprise. But Wilson also spotted that extra undefinable quality that all good actors possess. The powerful agent was also responsible for the name change to plain John Smith. An extensive career on the silver screen followed, working with the biggest names in the business, including Humphrey Bogart, Rita Hayworth, Gary Cooper, and the Duke himself. In fact, John Wayne was so impressed with the young actor that shortly after their first meeting, he signed Smitty to his own label, Bat Jack Productions. They became close friends and remained so until Wayne's death. In 1958, the young John Smith was voted the up-and-coming star of the year. That same year saw him land his first big TV role in the Western series Cimarron City. Now headed for stardom, he had a strong, easy, and professional style and endeared himself to all who were lucky enough to work alongside him. Then, in 1959, he was signed for probably what became his most famous and defining role, the role for which he is remembered most fondly as the tall, strong, compassionate, and hard-working rancher Slim Sherman in the TV Western series, Laramie. Co-starring yours truly. Yeah. Yeah. For four years, John and I worked together every day on the set of Laramie, and they were great times. We worked hard and we played hard. And like Mary, I was proud to call John my friend. Now we return to young Mary Kennedy, growing up in Maine at all of 12 years old, the first time Laramie ever aired. She never missed an episode, not one during the four-year run. The whole world stopped spinning for that hour every week, filling Mary's life with happiness and pleasant dreams. So when Laramie finished its run in 1963, young Mary was heartbroken. The years passed and John's appearances on screen became fewer, but Mary never ever forgot him nor the lessons about tolerance, friendship, and compassion his characterizations taught her, and he was never to be replaced by another actor in her heart. Well now, the fates conspired that the two would one day meet face to face, but when the chance finally came, Mary was too shy or too polite to grab them with both hands, and the opportunity to meet her childhood hero slipped through her fingers, not once, but twice. Smitty walked into the restaurant where Mary worked as a waitress in her late teens. At the time she gathered up the courage to speak to him, he'd already left. The second time was when the now happily married Mary was on a tour around Universal Studios when John stepped out in front of their guide bus. Another chance gone. Jim asked his wife if there was anything she had wanted to do in life that she regretted not having achieved. Mary didn't hesitate. She wanted to meet John Smith her whole life and let him know how much happiness his performances on screen had given her and for the chance to simply say thank you. Jim's reaction? 
go for it. Try and find the guy. Pretty incredible, huh? Well, that's the way Jim Brown is. Well, after two years of trying to track an elusive and by now fairly reclusive John down, Mary finally reached her goal. She met Smitty. And instead of feeling awestruck and tongue-tied as she thought she might, what she found instead was an easy friendship. In fact, a lifelong friendship, sharing many common interests and the love of the Western genre. She met a warm, witty, intelligent, and gentle soul whose humility made it hard for him to understand just why Mary and others had admired him and his talent for all these many years. But that was part of what made him so special, his humility. Mary's friendship with John lasted nine brief but golden years. He became a member of the family during this time, visiting with Mary, Jim, and their teenage son Weston at their home here in Scottsdale. And Mary, along with her sister Nancy and their mother, spent many pleasant days with John at his home in North Hollywood. He was also an honored guest at the very first Festival of the West in 1991. Though in subsequent years his health was failing and prevented him from attending, but his thoughts and good wishes always accompanied Mary and her dedicated team of helpers for their success. John died on January 25th, 1995 at the age of only 63. His untimely death was a crushing blow and left a gaping void in the life of his close friend, Mary. So many of us have experienced heartbreak at the loss of a dear friend, but few of us go on to celebrate that life in such a truly remarkable and devoted manner as for John. This festival has been an annual celebration dedicated to the memory of John's life and work as her personal tribute to the joy he brought to her and countless others during his career. In a few moments, we'll get to view some clips of Spitty's contributions to both silver and television screens. And this has been put together by Mary's friends in the various Laramie fan clubs. And believe me, there's a whole bunch of these guys here today. Over 50 of them, in fact. Let's hear from you all. Yeah! Well, this was young Mary's playground, and here was her childhood dream, one that she's carried with her for over 50 years, along with so many other Smitty fans around the world. His friendship and influence on her has lasted his lifetime and way, way beyond. He was a big man in every sense of the word, a gentleman and a gentleman. Smitty, I'm pretty sure you're smiling down on us right now with that warm, easy grin that we all knew and loved. Well, my friend, all your cowboy pals salute you. And Mary, we all love you. Down One last thanks, Mitty. The fans have also asked me to send a short personal message along. It reads like this. Dear Smitty, you once said to Mary, that you wondered if anybody still remembered you. Well, yes, John, we or many fans remember and are grateful every day for the positive influence you still have on our lives. You will always remain in our hearts. Thank you all for listening. Now, let's look at a little of John's work. <laughs> 